weights and fit. There we go. I've got a life lesson for you, but chances are you've probably heard it before. Unless you live under a rock, you've probably heard about these two guys that got caught cheating at the Lake Erie Walleye Trail's final event. Truthfully, I had no intention of making this video. That type of fishing is just so far and above my experience and my knowledge that I just didn't feel like I could contribute anything meaningful to the topic that hadn't already been discussed. And it's been talked about ad nauseum on pretty much every social platform out there. But for some reason, I've had a few people message me and ask me my thoughts on it. So here we are. In case you don't know what happened, two guys got caught stuffing lead weights and other walleye fillets into their fish to make them heavier, giving them an unfair advantage at the scales. But after all the videos were posted and the rage and the chaos started to subside, many people were still left with a lot of questions. But the two big ones were how long have they been doing this and how did they get caught? The reality is, unless these two guys confess to all their cheating, we'll probably never know how long they've actually been doing this. But a lot of people that have competed against them for a long time would say it's probably been a while. How did they get caught this time? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You have to understand, judges of competitions like this see hundreds if not thousands of fish on scales every single year. So they get pretty good at eyeballing the length and the weight of a fish just by looking at it. And these two guys got really confident and really careless with their cheating. They took an average Lake Erie four to five pound walleye, stuffed it full of lead and meat. And then after a weigh in of five fish, they came out with almost 34 pounds of fish. That's almost a seven pound average. But even someone as inexperienced as I am at catching walleye could look at those fish and be like, nah, something's not right there. And that's exactly what went through the judge's head. The main judge appeared on a video podcast over at the Big Water Fishing uh, YouTube channel and spoke about the mental hoops that he had to jump through to navigate this whole situation. As a fellow judge, I can totally appreciate the agony he must have felt when calling these guys out and dealing with this all this stuff. So let's talk about cheating for a minute. Rarely will someone ever cheat just once. Once you get a taste of taking the easy road and reaping all the benefits, there's a pretty high chance that you're gonna keep doing it. It's probably no different with these guys. Like I said, it might be difficult to discern just how long they've actually been doing this, but based on how they got caught this time, it's probably been a while. I mean, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were taking lead weights, wrapping them in meat to make them less detectable, and then stuffing them into these fish. You know, they knew exactly what they were doing. And that alone is probably indicative enough that they have been doing this for a while and they knew how to do it without getting caught. Not to mention the extreme excess of weights that they crammed into these fish was pretty indicative that they were pretty confident they weren't gonna get caught this time. But why? Why cheat? For money? For glory? For fame? There are a lot of reasons to cheat, after all. It's the short road to success. And after some practice, you can get pretty good at it too. But their confidence was ultimately their demise. See, that's the thing about cheaters. Eventually, after doing it for so long, you get cocky and you get careless, and then you get busted. It might take a year, it might take a few years, but eventually, all cheaters screw up something and then they get caught. Here's another example of a cheater that got too comfortable and got careless, made a mistake, and ultimately was exposed. Now, full disclosure, I had no part in judging this competition or any part of the competition whatsoever. Uh, this story is coming from my recollection from a couple of years ago, so the details might be a bit fuzzy, but you get the gist of it. A competitor in a fellow kayak fishing group had been placing in the top three and winning a not insignificant amount of money pretty regularly. But it wasn't until one of the judges noticed something strange in one of his pictures that made them be like, eh, something's not right here. Just barely noticeable was a lump of melted plastic just, uh, just off of his hand in the picture. Eventually, it was discovered that on the morning of each of the competitions, he would present a perfectly good bump board to the judges, but he secretly had another bump board that he had cut a small section off where there were no measurements and then welded the bump board back together making it shorter 
but keeping all the same measurements that everyone else was using. And that would add an extra couple of inches to every single fish that he caught. So once this guy would hit the water, he'd swap out the legal bump board for the cheater board. When he puts his fish on the board, he would use his hand and cover the seam where the weld was in all the pictures so you couldn't see it. But after doing this for a while, he got careless. And when he took this picture, he was just like, ah, whatever, it's good enough. But he probably didn't notice that you could see the seam. But the judges noticed that the judges went back and looked at all the other submissions and realized that he had been cheating for a long time, probably. All that is to say that once you cheat, it's very difficult to break the cycle. And winning via cheating just isn't the same. That sweet, sweet feeling of victory, besting your opponents against all odds, is overshadowed by internal shame. Cheaters know they didn't really win. Their victories are artificial. Their celebrations are all fake. And when it is that they're eventually exposed, it's crushing and the shame is real. And not just for the cheaters, for their friends, for their families, for their loved ones, and for anyone that had ever supported them. They took unearned trust and stomped all over it. These two anglers took a lot of money and prizes and sponsorships away from people who would have otherwise rightfully earned it. But when you're fishing at that level, it's probably not about money and prizes. I mean, most of those guys are probably rolling up in $80,000 trucks with $100,000 boats with another ten dollars to $20,000 worth of gear and electronics. It's not about money for these guys. They probably have money. For those guys, they had to take time, time away from work, away from friends and families and children to pursue this dream. That's time that they will never get back. And it was all for nothing because they had no chance to win. They were competing against people that tried to guarantee victory by any means necessary. So don't cheat at anything. It will never be worth the money. It will never be worth the fame. And whatever it is that you eventually get exposed, the world will never let you forget it.